Hello, happy Friday and welcome to episode three of the Digital Discovery Show. Thrilled to um, be bringing this to you. I'm Liz, one of the co-founders of Tourism Tribe and of course Navi as well. So bringing you these um, interview sessions, sharing with you stories from the front line in small business, in regional communities, in tourism and looking at how businesses are really helping themselves, thinking about this really challenging time in COVID and other challenges that are thrown up to us in life generally, but certainly the business impacts that many Australian communities have been through and how we can use digital and how we can use techniques to really help ourselves and sharing those stories because it's so important. That's how we learn, particularly in small businesses. We know all of the research shows us that when we see examples of what other small businesses and regional communities are doing, we can relate to them. So that's the whole idea of this program is to bring you those real case studies and those real stories and uh, get, those, get those through to you. Today is um, end of another big week. They're always big weeks uh, and it's been terrific. We've continued to launch the BizKeeper program and had um, gearing up towards the, the live start of that on the 9th next week on Wednesday the 9th of September and that's a foundation course that's going to um, be really useful for people who are looking to take that next step and need that guidance and direction in terms of um, embracing digital as something that becomes their best ally as opposed to it being that thing that they put on the back burner for a while and now's a good time to do it while things are things are pretty quiet and we've also got lots of free resources you can tap into as well like our free smart tourism marketing system program you can see that on the screen their free course but End of the week, happy Friday again, and Friday means introducing you to somebody um, really interesting. And it's my absolute pleasure to introduce you to um, Ali McLean. Now, Ali um, hails from the Shire of Hay, and um, she heads up the projects in there. She's project manager for their economic development um, team in Hay. Hi, Ali, how are you going? Hi, Liz. Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. Um, so we're going to have a chat with Ali about the um, initiative that she's running there, which is called Reboot Hay, and she's going to tell us about that. And I think I'd like to start, though, Ali, by just asking you about your story and a bit about Hay, um, your part of the world, why you're there, what you do there, and tell us a little bit about Hay in New South Wales. So Hay is down in southwestern New South Wales. We're halfway between Adelaide and Sydney uh, and we exist on the Hay Plain. So it's the flattest place in the southern hemisphere. It is quite a spectacular uh, landscape because of that flatness and we have obviously amazing sunsets and sunrises that are uninterrupted. Um, we've had a couple of hard years here. Obviously drought has impacted us quite significantly. Uh, and we were only just really recovering from the millennial drought, uh, millennium drought, I should say, when the next one hit. Uh, and that's always hard for our town. We lost a significant portion of our population. We lost uh, in that millennial drought, um, that age group who would now be having children and going into business and being our leaders. And those people left and, and they didn't necessarily come back. So we're at a stage now where we're trying to really reboot our community both from a tourism point of view and an economic point of view um, and we've got a new general manager at our council and it has been amazing we've just got this new breath of fresh air it's a really um, proactive council now uh, and we've luckily been able to back that up with some funding uh, which always helps um, to be able to implement some of these programs that have been on our wish list for a really long time so I uh, live, I actually live 100 kilometres from Hay on a sheep property. Um, and it's a little drive down the road, isn't it, for you? Yeah, it's, well, it's, amazing what, it's amazing what you get used to. We don't think that's anything, 100 k's. Um, and so I, I live out there and I have been working in tourism for about 20 years, particularly with the Long Paddock Touring Route, uh, one of our drive tours down here. Um, and I've just taken on this role with Hay. And it's been fantastic. It's really, it's a really positive experience, and I'm amazed at how positive our tourism operators are, 
given everything that they've suffered over the past couple of months, it's uh, it's amazing. I wonder if it's that sense of we're not going to give up now. That there's, you know, it's not an option to give up. You know, we'll take every opportunity we can to to make this work. Sort of like a nothing nothing to lose attitude now. Given so so the the things you've experienced, like drought, was the big one for you guys, wasn't it? So you've you've come out of a, a, an elongated drought season. That's been the key thing. We have and obviously mm. small community, uh, very reliant on agriculture in terms of our mm. economy. Um, and then tourism sitting to the side of that. Uh, and, I mean, tourism actually has been our, our lifeblood over all of, all of those years. And what was interesting during COVID, when um, the first social restrictions came in and we saw the impact that had on tourism initially, it was really interesting for our businesses because it made them realise how important tourism is to their bottom line. And so... Mm -hmm. We've been able to use that um, as a real positive. So they realise now how important they are. They want to do something to improve their businesses. And we had this really bizarre situation where the Queensland border shut and because of that everyone was trapped in New South Wales. Obviously ours is mainly a drive market, the caravan and camping mm -hmm. market, and we had the busiest July we've ever had. So we were packed, the streets were full, it was absolutely fantastic. And then they shut the Victorian border and and the tap ran dry. So mm -hmm. it's a roller coaster. It is, isn't it? I just thought before we move off hay itself as a tourism experience, um, my little bit of research into hay as I've been working with you and the tourism operators there over the last week or two has been that you blend the agriculture experience really um I'd, I'd say really authentically into the tourism experience. That's my sense of it. It's not an add-on. You are actually having an agricultural experience as a visitor. That was my impression. And when I, we look at some of the images that are online for Hay, I see that like in your Instagram posts, you know, you it's really authentically telling what that agricultural lifestyle looks like and um, how beautiful, uh, how unique and, and beautiful that is, and particularly to somebody who doesn't get to, to live with that and experience it. So I think you play on that in a, in a very genuine kind of way. Um, yeah, I think it's great. I think that's great. It's really, and that's what works, isn't it? It's about telling your story. And I just have to mention also for people who are listening that given that when we talk about digital and digital communications, um, how something has wor is working for you as well, um, coincidentally, which is your historical angle and one particular story that Hay absolutely owns, which is in the Second World War and um, Japanese people being interned in Hay and how the ABC podcast series, the, the history um, series that they run, has just published a two-part, two-episodes podcast on that and how that is so interesting to listen to and, it you know, that's, that's yours. You own that story. Now, ABC have done that, interviewing locals in the area about what that looked like and how you've already started to see um, some visitors, some of your operators were telling me, as a result of that podcast. So I'm just digressing to that for listeners to, if they want to go and listen to something really interesting about Hay and just sort of understand a bit more about it. But that's, it's great how also podcasts are now starting to trigger awareness. And so that history line is really important there. And that history... Um, to be able to bring that alive is so important for us. So we have, we've always had a, a static um, display and an understanding for people, information panels, et cetera, of our history. But we're now starting to move into digitising that history, bringing it alive to people where they are. So it gives mm -hmm. them a real taste of, um, you know, hey, as more than just that agricultural that we were talking about, which is so important to us, but our history is really rich um, and it has such an impact on the rest of Australia that, I mean, we find it fascinating and now it's really good to have that um, validated by other people. So they've listened to the podcast and they're coming to visit Hay. So it's an amazing, podcasts are an amazing tool um, to be able to really get into people when they are relaxed and receptive, I think. And I then think in, terms so. of our, in terms of our ag, we're really realistic here, I think, and that comes probably from um, from that agricultural background. You can only work with what you've got, but let's make the best of it. 
we realise that we're probably not, we're not going to be able to compete as a, as a destination per se, but we're a great place to visit on the way to somewhere else. Um, mm. And we want to make the most of that situation. Uh, and we have this incredible natural landscape that you can see nowhere else in the world. And so that's what we're focusing on and that's what we're going to make our number one attraction. Yeah, and I would say just on the topic of hay as a as a place to stop and stay and experience that lifestyle, the other real strength for you guys is when we, we look at hay online, it's, everyone keeps saying it's such a friendly town. So that speaks to what you were saying about the enthusiasm of your local business community and recognising the value of tourism, that people are so welcoming to tourists and it's not an effort for them to be hospitable and say, welcome, come, have the best seat in the house. We want you here. So, and that, and people are advocating for hay about that. So you're doing a lot right and um, hats off to you. But I want to ask you about it, what, what it looks like as somebody who's a manager in council who, you know, when you when you were able to secure this funding, what did you do? What what what's been your approach, um, and that you're working on now to really sort of um, reboot? Hey, what does that look like? I think the, the first thing that we looked at was economically what is realistic. There, there, you can apply for a lot of funding, and you can do a lot of um, fuss and bother. I like to say, and it doesn't actually have an impact, and. Anyone who works in local council knows that you can't con your own community. So there's no point trying to do a top-down approach. This is what you need to do. It just won't work. So we actually went out to our businesses. We secured the funding, which was which was drought funding, which was um, we're eternally grateful for that the government actually recognises that we do need additional help outside of that agricultural sector to be able to support our communities. Uh, so we secured the funding, but then we said we're actually going to go to our community and say, what do you want? So we did a business survey, a whole of business survey, and we got some great feedback. Not all of it was positive, and that's fine as well, and we've addressed that. And we've made that public to everyone, so there's no more secrets. Everyone can see what we're doing. Um, but we've actually listened to what they said. So some of the things that I had initially planned, the businesses weren't interested in. And so we're not going to do those at this point. We're going to go with what they wanted to do. And you won't be surprised to know that it was social media, social media, social media. Uh, they all want to do that. But one of the other things that we've realised is they also need business help. They need to see where they fit within the community. They need to see where they fit within New South Wales uh, in terms of a tourism destination. Also, they need to know that the council's got their back. And so we're working really hard to change the communication flow with our businesses. So we do weekly emails that are one topic only. This is what we want to talk to you about today. Send mm -hmm. us any feedback that you have. We're making it short and sweet and we're trying to take out all the fuss and bother for them. So around all the information that happened with COVID, we would do a very brief, these are the key points you need to know, here's the additional information to make them feel supported. We asked mm. them how they wanted to be communicated to and that was via email. I mean, we could walk the street here and you could have it done in 20 minutes, but <laughs> email is, people do it late at night, early in the morning, when they get a minute, so that's worked really well. But we also um, heard from them that they wanted they wanted assistance and they wanted it to be very practical. Uh, and so what we wanted to do was get Tourism Tribe involved so that they had a very hands-on, practical approach to how you develop tourism after everything that we've been through. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and that resonates, those findings that you had and the feedback um, that, that you're talking about, that resonates generally with what we hear about small business, that um, it, the approach needs to be very hands-on, supported, practical for upskilling. And they need to see, the other thing we always hear is that they need to see examples of other businesses and what they're doing or other tourism regions in this case and what they're doing. That that means a lot more than just giving them the theory. Um, so that's why it's really important with this program that we're running with you um, for their, their tourism business development is to include um, lots, of, lots of examples, real life examples, but also support through that program and, and hand holding with them. It's interesting what you said about things that they didn't say they needed, but you feel that that also is necessary. That's like the Henry Ford 
theory, isn't it? You know, if you had have asked them, what do you need with the with horse and cart, they would have said faster horses. So we wouldn't have got the motor car. And that's another thing when it comes to business development and particularly what we see with digital, embracing digital, is people don't know what they don't know. Mm. And so you have to open up that awareness of what's possible and we do that with, um, with case studies as well. Um, what... Yeah. What do you think is going to kind of be the critical thing for them to grasp these opportunities? I mean, you know that there's lots of different opportunities and you talk about taking away the fuss and bother. What do you think, if they only did one or two things, what do you think would be the best things that they could do, do you reckon? I think uh, probably for our businesses they need to... um, they need to back themselves just a little bit more and recognise that that we do have some good tourism product here, that there's lots of opportunity to develop and that's okay. If you're not perfect right now, that's fine. And I think doing it as a group like we're doing where we're all in there together, you know, the other day when we did our first session and everyone was talking to each other and everyone was um, giving tips, it was so supportive for them and that's probably something that we haven't had in the past, that that real um, sense of cohesion as a tourism body with our businesses and with the council as well. So that was really fantastic. And I think if we can give them confidence that what they're doing is, is good, um, that we can all improve, that's the other message that I think is really important. We don't pretend to know everything. We're learning as we go along. Uh, and we're learning from some of our businesses as well who do it really well. So That's probably one of the key things that we want to give them and what we hope they take out of it. But even just seeing them inspired by some of the practical tips the other day was great because it means they're going to go back and start improving their social media, improving their digital experience, and by doing that, they're going to improve their tourism product, and that's great for everyone. So those small wins that you can get quickly are really tantalising for our tourism businesses. You know, you, you do a course on Tuesday and by Thursday you're already starting to see something that you've done. That is that is so comforting when you're in business or when you've been to a workshop. And the fact that they're seeing the other businesses do it as well, it's, it's really fantastic for us. And mm. I think as a council we're also trying to lead the way. So we're doing the old um, do as I say and do as I do. We're really working on our social media and we're really working on engaging with other communities, with other tourism bodies, with other organisations so that we can learn from them as well. But that sense of cohesion is what we're really, what we really want to foster with our businesses. And that, I mean, it sounds a bit trite, you know, we're all in this together, but we we really want that to be the case. And, and this is our first step in saying to them, you told us what your feedback was, we've got a program that's going to deliver that now build that relationship with us so that it's less about, you know, sometimes people see councils as being the, you know, an authoritarian, you know, it's roads and rates and rubbish, you know, what are they kind of doing in tourism? It's almost like it's to the side. Um, And what we're trying to do is just change that whole view that, that tourism is just as important as any other industry, in fact, vitally important for us, and that council supports that. And that's really important for them too, that, it's the value that we're giving them as an industry and the value that that gives them then as business owners as well um, is really important in a small community. Yeah, yeah, oh, you're doing so much that's right. Just for the audience, I'm just going to explain because I haven't. Um, it's because of COVID. Um, so so just the backstory for people listening. Ali um, heard about tourism trying to fire a mate in another region and um, made the contact and said, look, we you know, could what, what could you do in terms of a program to help them to develop their tourism skills and embrace digital and social media better? And so we put together a four-week program, which is a series of workshops, support through uh, over the, that period of time, access to Tourism Tribe, um, learning library, um, very interactive, you know, lots of exercises and things. Um, so for workshops as such and that's not an unusual kind of program except because of COVID we can't physically be there of course we can't get over the border 
And uh, so what we've done is we're workshopping it via Zoom, which we've started to do. And so everybody comes together into the council chambers. And so they're, they're sitting at a safe distance from each other doing their social distancing piece and we're beaming in. And um, so it's like we're there. So we're building that rapport. And so that's just, you just can't let travel restrictions stop this kind of thing going ahead. And so I just wanted to explain that, how that was happening in a physical sense. And it works quite well. It's, um, we've been doing quite a lot like that. Um, the other thing I think in terms of engaging with, um, with the council, I love the fact that you, you've taken this program so seriously, you've given it its own online real estate and have a domain, a web, a website dedicated to the Reboot Hay program, which includes, of course, the program we're running with you and the, the entire initiative. So you talk about your weekly emails, you talked about the survey, but you also convinced council to create a Reboot Hay website. So that to me says that you've really got the councillors around the table um, are really in, are bought into this. Um, so that's that's so important too, isn't it? Often I see with councils, as you said, tourism is off to the side. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, we've got to spend a bit of money on you know, on that tourism initiative over there, you know. So how do you, what do you think your success um, criteria, you know, how, did, how were you successful doing that? The website has been such a bonus because it gives us that um, that interaction. Uh, it's like immediate. So it's not going through a council website that then goes to someone else and then comes mm -hmm. to you. And there's mm -hmm. also, you know, we were talking about it. It's two very different audiences. When you go to a council website, you're looking for straight up stats and information as a as a rate payer or as someone. When the library open or, um, yeah. You know, exactly that sort of stuff mm -hmm. and we wanted very specifically to sit outside of that to say that this is a program that is going to run differently to the constraints of council so it's not going to be that bureaucracy it's not going to be that dry kind of um you know that perception that it that will be dry and uninspiring and so we we then chose three key criteria that we wanted for our businesses and that was to inspire them because because of our distance from everywhere, it can be quite isolating and you can actually operate in isolation here almost, I mean, almost successfully. And, and we want them to actually look outside and see other businesses that are doing it really well in rural and remote areas. So we want to inspire them. We want to educate them in the way that they want to be educated on the topics that they want to be educated on. So get that push to come from them first and then we will find someone who is excellent and deliver that for them. Um, and then we wanted to provide them with information like I was talking about with the emails. So it is it is the key points, it's fast, it's sharp, and we then become like a library of information for them around grants, around um, tourism uh, information around any kind of business workshops or skills that we can deliver them or we think is worthwhile for them to know. So we act as the filter for all of that information that ends up in your inbox often and we we um, curate it for them so that it's easy for them to understand. And in doing that, we have become quite a trusted source of information. And so now they're looking for our emails to see what they need to know and that is invaluable for us in terms of the relationship that we now have with our tourism operators. We can then start to lean on them as they lean on us. And, and that's cool. been really great. And that, I think, has come from the website and the emails as well. But the website is also, it's visually appealing, it's short and it's sharp, and it's what we want them to be doing. So it's that lead by example again. There's not a huge amount of information on there, but when we do put something up on there, um, it's what we need them to know so they don't have to sift through a lot of information again. So that has been very helpful in terms of rolling the program out and it's something that we will continue to use um, into the future the more funding that we can get, we hope. Mm, and I can imagine that you could use that as a channel too to show um, examples. So where they start to develop their digital skills, be that make improvements to their website, great social media posts or engagement, do some do some video at their tourism business, whatever it is, you could actually start to showcase those examples, which is going to help with that inspiration as well. 
that, exactly. That we actually now the other day in the workshop after the after the workshop when the chit chat was happening, that um, you know there were people who were already doing it really well in Hay, and some of those people were were in the workshop, and and some of the other businesses were having a little chat to them. So they're starting to do that. They're starting to look at each other's businesses, which is great. You know, we need right. them to be looking at each other and working collaboratively. I feel like playing. <laughs> meeting bingo you know like i'm ticking off all those words of collaboration journey together yeah, leading, yeah, all that yeah, yeah. Well, no. but it was really great to see them talking to each other and getting some tips and that's exactly what we wanted to do was to get them in that space where they can feel comfortable with each other so that they're not in competition with each other but that we're all in it together oh there i go oh. again yeah, oh, we're all in it together, Ali. We're all in it together. But it is about partnerships at different levels, isn't it? You know, and it's and it's also about supply partnerships. I mean, we talk about this like you and Hay Council and me and Despina and Tourism Tribe are building a good relationship, and that's really important. We talk about that with a lot of tourism businesses or any any small businesses and their relationship often is can be really challenging with their web developer that's a really that's a real common thing and i don't know if you have any local web developers around hay that people would use or if they need to go out of town but having that really good relationship with your web developer is critical so that the owner can have control of the website and can know how to update it and make the most of it and that's something that we will you know, it's it sort of it's a, probably that next kind of level for you, for your group, but sort of edging them towards if they are going to have a website for their business, because some of them I know um, don't have, then you know that knowing how to how to communicate their needs and choosing a web developer who actually has their business interests at heart and understands something about business and marketing isn't just creating like an online brochure for their which is their website. Um, but the relationships are critical and um, you're facilitating that and I think that's key. We found that with the other programs that we've run is even in the virtual space where we might have had, you know, 30 operators in an intake into an online training program from all around Australia. They would start to build a relationship with each other in the group um, sessions and they'd start sharing outside of the session. They would start, oh, well, you should try this. This works for us. And we just love it. That's just fantastic that they're doing that. So I saw I saw it too on Tuesday in the first workshop that they're all a little bit, you know, sitting back a little bit. By the end, though, I couldn't keep them quiet. They were <laughs> all contributing. So it's great. And it's been really interesting also, I think, with, um, you know, the Buy from the Bush campaign has given a lot oh. of confidence to our businesses that they can they can go out beyond this market here which is fantastic um and introducing them to the the joys of digital media where they are really um getting beyond the boundaries of hay is really exciting for them and i hope that they're getting to that point now where they see that as a real opportunity that it's not just Main Street Hay that they're talking to. It's a much broader audience and you just never know where that's going to lead. And that's really, I think, exciting for them. And they will they will get on board with that as well, I'm confident. Yeah, yeah. Well it'll be it will be interesting to explore what is produced or handmade or designed in hay that could be um, sold through e-commerce. That's yeah, just another to- way of we did a Facebook series called the um, the Haymakers, and we actually went to all of the people we know who make things at home. Um, oh. You know, and and in your mind you're thinking, oh gosh, doilies and and jam. But what we actually found was oh, a good doily. Come on, <laughs> uh, we found the most beautiful handmade products that are that are. They are next level gorgeous, you know, crocheted from hand dyed wool, handmade wool skeins, um, you know, paper daisies, uh, um, just the, the most amazing array of things that we didn't even know that we had here until we went out and said, hey, put your hand up, guys. And we did a Facebook series on them and they all got business from that as well. So, it's been really great for us as well to see what's out there that we that we didn't know and we're locals. The hay makers, I love it. It's mm. very good. And make hay while the sun shines. There's so many, yes. so much you can do with that. Oh, so many 
puns. Yeah, so many. What, who are your so many puns? Um, how, who are your haymakers? Who are your what? What about heroes? Are there heroes around hay that you think of in terms of your businesses that you would like to share with the audience so that they can check them out? You know. What are, what are some of the, are there some businesses that are doing some things really well that you would like to make a shout out to? There's a, there's a really, there's two businesses actually just um, that I mentioned then who are home-based businesses. I'm just sorry. Um, and one is Willowfield Farm and they do, uh, Ellen is a school teacher and in her spare time she does the most beautiful crocheted beanies. They're absolutely gorgeous. Willow and then another. Willowfield Farm, and mm -hmm. then another one is Saltbush Schemes. Now, I am not a not a knitter, but I can appreciate beauty when I see it. Um, and Carly hand dyes with natural dyes these beautiful wool schemes that that knitters from all over the world then order from her. So, there are two businesses that are are beautifully connected with us because we're a wool growing area, mm -hmm. but. But who would have known that they were out there and doing these amazing things? And, and they are on social media and they're doing really well, but they are the types of businesses that we're trying to foster. You know, you don't have to be massive when you start. You don't even have to be in the main street, but you can still be a really great business. Yeah, and I think, you know, as we're working with you to build the online presence of Hay overall as a as a, a must, you know, stop, visit, stay overnight, have a good look around um, place as you're on that drive trip. Um, you know, we can certainly explore those opportunities about, you know, bringing that into the stories and make sure it's really well integrated. Um, and we've got some really good examples of other businesses who've done plays on that as well. There's Tambo Teddies in Western Queensland. Um, you're probably aware of them. So, um, so you know, it comes off the back of it's literally the lady who, who owns it, and her name's going to pop for me in a moment, used to be a wool classer. This woman knows her wool, but now she runs Tambo Teddies and has a um, actually in Toowoomba in South South Queensland. That's where they are sewing um, by people who have had to look for work who have come in as um, as immigrants. So there's great stories in there, and she's really good at storytelling around people who've purchased the teddies as well. So you know, it's like these businesses find their unique way of not only delivering the product and making the product, but it's also about how they tell the story of the product. So she really leans on um, the stories of the people who buy them because behind every teddy is a story, you know. Yeah. So, so there's so many ideas we can, you know, kind of share across Australia. Um, but, you know, no, that's, that's great. Are there any people in town who are really good at their social media that jump out for you? Um, We've actually got one of our um, artists, we have an artist in town, Chris McClellan, uh, and he owns an art gallery and he is an incredible artist. He does very fine um, pencil drawings and they're, they're quite incredible and you can go into his art gallery and actually watch Chris do the artwork, which is, it's mind-blowing. If you're not artistic, it is just incredible to watch and I'm sure you'd appreciate it more if you are. But, um, you know, Margie and... Chris were farmers, they've moved into town. Chris has made his passion now his work and Margie's a photographer um, and I'm sure they wouldn't mind me saying but they're at, the, they're at the older end of the spectrum and they are really inspiring because they haven't sat still and just gone with traditional mode. You know, they're out there, they are trying to build an audience around Chris's artwork. They're very generous in terms of their social media about who they help and promote and that's the sort of thing that we want to see happen as well, that, um, you know, at any age, at any stage, you can get involved in social media. There's not, there's not a hurdle that, you, that we can't help you get over to be able to do that. And so I find Chris and Margie are really inspiring in that respect. But then by the same token we had during COVID, our bakery, now they were shut down and they couldn't open up, if you remember, right back to the very beginning. And mm. they pivoted in a week to doing home deliveries, orders online, doing Facebook shout outs. It was so great to see this little bakery just turn around and and deliver what the community needed. So 
there's so many of them that that do it well who, who we are incredibly proud of for what they've done in the past mm. couple of months to cope with that but that's just a, a you know another great example of of what you what a small business can do in a small town yeah yeah no that's great no wonder you no wonder you've got cohesion and people working together because they've got that you know fighting attitude haven't they to survive so good on yeah. them that's really good and I think some I think uh, some genuine um, home pride as well is what I sense as well which is you know you can't you can't make that happen that's just there yeah. really good really good um, what do you think are some of the goals that people are working towards through the program that we're running with you the Hay Tourism Development Program do you think there are some clear goals as a group or for individuals? I think they are they they are um, they have put up with a lot our businesses over the past couple of years, um, particularly the last couple of months. I think have been trying for every business everywhere. Um, so I think one of their first goals is just to remain hopeful, and that might may sound a bit trite as well, but that's really important that they're that they have a, you know, a sense that things are going to get better and by doing something like Tourism Tribe, that's going to help things to get better. I think because we're such a pragmatic community, the sense of actually doing is really helpful for us. So to be in a room and doing has been really mm -hmm. good for their confidence. In terms mm -hmm. of their goals, they want to make their businesses better because they know the effect that that has on their bottom line. And for any business, you know, let's face it, if you if you're not if you're not making a living out of it, then perhaps you might be in the wrong might be in the wrong game. And as we said before, digital is such an important part of our lives now. COVID's probably shown that to us more than anything. It's part of everyone's life. It's how we communicate. It's how we connect. Mm -hmm. And I think the opportunities around that has presented a lot of goals for our businesses. So how do they really get involved in it? I think for many of them they had their toes in the water pre-COVID and now it's a deep dive in uh, and they just want to know how they do it and how they do it well. So they realise now how important it is to their business. And I think it's now to the point where it's almost like you need to know what your cash flow is, you need to know what your social media is, you need to know what your long-term goals are. And that, and it is that important for them and they realise that now. So to be able to help them to do that has been really rewarding and I think it will be really beneficial for our businesses but also economically for the town. And just from a PR point of view, we can't, you can't discount how, uh, how good it has been, how, how beneficial it has been for the council to be seen to be proactive in supporting our tourism businesses at mm -hmm. this time particularly mm -hmm. so it has been a really positive interaction that we've started with our businesses and that I think is our goal as well to to make them feel supported as I've said before um, and to to be able to lead them in a direction that helps their businesses so for our businesses their goal is to be better and for us it is to help them help them to achieve that and also for us to get better as well I mean we we will take any and all learning opportunities at council, which is which is really nice. And we've got some really young, enthusiastic people who want to be involved in that as well, who want to lead that for council, and, and that's great too. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I think about digital, you know, we often say just how it's just constantly changing. Take any one of the platforms, it's continually moving, all the recent changes on Facebook interface, they do your head in and you just, it's really hard to keep up with. But the good, there is a, a flip side of this and that is that when you take one step forward with digital upskilling, then you can't undo it. It's actually any step forward is good. And if you were to take one small step, just one small step every day, that would be 365 steps in a year where the one day you went, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to set up a safe password management system. Yay, you know, that's a big step forward. I'm going to learn how to bookmark a browser, a, a URL in my browser, you know, like things like basic things can make such a difference to people. And it's same with social media as well. And I like what you said about, 
social media, it's like it's a, you've got to have good cash flow. You also have to have a good social media presence. And I think we have arrived at that now. I agree with you. I think we've been trying to work out exactly how important it is in small businesses' lives. And for some, it's a no-brainer. We highly visual businesses and, you know, and also businesses that are run and operated by younger people, it was a no-brainer for them. Where you've got a demographic, and it's a lot of those people out in regional areas who are entrepreneurial enough and got enough fighting spirit to start businesses and continue businesses, and they're in their 50s or 60s, it's a whole different proposition. But now they are realising that they've got to be part of it. And the fact that you guys are moving together, council's moving with them, they're in the room with them with this upskilling is fantastic. Because a goal for me is get them to take a small step each week. And a goal for me is that they walk out of that program with their social media supporting each other. So every time one of those businesses does a post and puts the right tags on it, the, the team who are looking after social media in council are responding to that, supporting them, and we get the operators to do that with each other as well. That is going to make a massive difference. Just that is an example of just, and we, we rave about it all the time, just supporting each other on social media, but we're going to absolutely make it happen with this group. And it was really um, interesting the other day seeing um, the light bulbs go off on top of people's heads when you would say things as simple as do you know how to bookmark a web browser so for me it was like well of course I do but then mm. I looked around the room and thought you know what you can never assume yeah. and and that is has been a, a really big um, lesson for me in terms of how I communicate or the information that I give or even you know I'm saying click here to register those People need reassurance to do that, whereas there's a generation who just do it innately, mm -hmm. do it naturally, mm -hmm. and then you've got to remember that there's there are people out there who are absolutely frightened by the world of digital media. And so that the other day when I saw it, I thought, oh, I, I need to remember that. I've got to put that into my head and remember that not everyone lives this and breathes this every single day. Yeah. And I've just thought of an idea, actually, is out of each session, out of each week, there might be one, two or three tips Tea that you could share via your weekly email that would go more broadly. Yes, I think that is a great idea, actually. And it's something that we need to, when you're doing something really good like this, one of the things that councils don't do is they don't tell or they don't promote it um, as you would if you were in business. So if I was doing this as a business owner and I had organised these workshops for my clients and they were doing really well, I would promote that. But as a council, we tend to just let that happen and then hope that everyone finds out by osmosis or the grapevine, which still works yeah. incredibly well, I've got to say. Yeah. Matthew. Um, but that's something that we need to work at as well. We need to promote what we're doing in a positive way too. So that that's a challenge for me, I think. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, I think there's going to be some people listening to this show and listening to you, Ali, who are having council envy. <laughs> they're going to be going, oh, I wish our council was doing something like this, or they work in a council and they're going, I wish our council could do something like this. If they wanted to chat with you about what you're doing, are you open to that? I expect that you might get some people who are curious about, you know, how you've made this happen. Um, or would you have any other tips for them to make something like this happen in their region? Um, I'm happy to, anyone can get in contact with me, happy to chat or send me an email or however you'd like to, however you'd like to get in contact. In terms of how you do this, I think we probably, um, we probably landed in a, in a good time in a way. If uh, drought, then COVID, we all... Uh, the whole community and the council as well realised that we couldn't keep going the way that we had, that we needed to really get in behind our tourism industry. And my aim is to make the tourism industry as important an economic driver as it is. So to that for that to be recognised in council and by doing this and by developing our businesses and being able to showcase our businesses, that makes my job much easier. So when I can go back to council and say, these are your businesses that were in there and this is the really good stuff that your businesses are doing oh, and these are the people they're attracting. 
that always makes the argument much easier. I am a big fan of data and I'm a big fan of stats. So anything that I can get a hold of that proves proves that tourism is vital to here makes mm-hmm. the argument easier as well. But what I've also found is that um, councils respond really well to, um, to being able to point at something almost. So being able to do a workshop where people are in a room and there's a, an image of that or the councillors can see that, that is a win for us. So the more that they can point at, the more that you can say that is what council is actually doing, that makes it easier for me to um, continue for them to support these sorts of these sorts of programs. And mm. I think also that open communication, there's, you know, we're, we're really working hard at council to change the way that we communicate with people and that it is a much more proactive approach. So if you have an issue, tell us about it. If we can help you, we will. If not, we will connect you with someone that can, as opposed to we don't want to hear it because it's going to be negative. So we're we're taking all the hits, good and bad at the moment, but that seems to be working and building that relationship, um, you know, and bridging that gap between that council building and the rest of the rest of the street and I'm sure anyone in a regional or rural town will tell you they know that feeling you kind of walk into the council building and and it's almost like a a, a fortress what we're trying to do is get rid of that make us just as much a part of the community as as our businesses are well it's interdependent isn't it survival of everybody in small towns in small rural towns you rely on each other and council relies on the people in the town and the businesses and and vice versa and you're the glue that's making it happen ali it's um, been my pleasure to give you the microphone and let you tell the story of hay i knew it was special when i first met you and um, you've proven that um, you t- you speak beautifully i will vote for you as CEO of the biggest council in Australia at some stage, if I can, because I think that's where you should be because you understand this space so well and you're taking such a, a fresh, connected approach to this and 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 helping a town to, to rejuvenate itself. And we're so pleased to be on the journey with you. Thank you for including us. And we will do everything we can to help these businesses to take that next step each week. It'll be great. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Thanks for having me, Liz. And and it's been such, it was so great last week to start the workshops because we've been, you know, waiting, um, just trying to find the right time. And then we got going and seeing people walk, work, walk out of those workshops the other day, enthusiastic and chatting to each other about what they had just heard. That is such a great reward, I think. So and for you to be able to do that via Zoom and keep a room moving for three hours when you're on a screen was quite incredible to watch, I'd have to say. So I can't imagine what you'd be like in person. It must be amazing. Oh, it takes a bit of coffee, really. That's that's the trick. <laughs> Never let me go caffeine free during COVID. That's all I can say. It's not happening. Um, no, we've got a great team, um, years and years of experience in um trying to keep everyone engaged and really practical kind of training so it and we've been doing the online stuff for a while so for us it's not it's not too hard a transition it's the length of time is the change now going to rather than an hour's training online to delivering what would have been a half day workshop but it's doable you just we've we make it happen just got to make it happen everyone's got to adapt so thank you yeah thank you Ali we really appreciate your time and I'm sure that Everything you've shared is going to be helpful to so many people. So thanks again. Thanks, Liz, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Absolutely.